Thank you so much, Navika. And this is, of course, uh, the session on India, the engine of global growth. Over to you, Navika. Thank you so much, Meghna and Madhav. And uh, thank you, Nirmala ji, Honorable Finance Minister. And uh, Nari Shakti uh, has never been on display as much as you have uh, shown it in North Block over the last five years. Steady, robust, and growth numbers that everybody is seeing. Audiences, I think she deserves a big round of applause. <laughs> Ms. Sita Raman, in the recent uh, budget session, we did dis discuss a lot about uh, the economy and the budget. But right now, we are in the throes of the political session. And uh, elections have been announced. Many are saying... Charso Par is now just kids' play for the BJP simply because you're actually taking leaders from every political party. Uh, three chief ministers, two chief ministers uh, are in jail, and uh, accounts of the largest national uh, opposition party have been frozen. At this rate, maybe 543 all to the BJP. <laughs> We are not taking people, we are welcoming them. <laughs> we, we, the doors open. Welcome. And uh, on the tax bit, if taxmen can ask you for payments from you, the claims which have been made, the assessee you or I will have to pay it, so is the party if it has violated that exemption which is given to them. As a political party, well, you, you file your assessments, you don't pay a tax. But you have not filed an assessment. And it is not just overnight. It's been going on from 21. You went to one court, the court said, pay it up. The second court, pay it up. Appeal, pay it up. No way have they said the IT was wrong in coming to you. Then you accept to pay some money. The entire amount which is levied on you, interest, penalty, all inclusive, you don't pay. You just pay a bit. And again, another bit. And then suddenly you think, oh, let me go to the court again. But suddenly elections are on. So you think best is to make political capital out of it. No. In fact, somebody was joking to me. One of the arguments which they put before the court and also in the media was how are we to fight elections, all this money has been taken away. They should ask each one of their MLAs whose houses are full of cash. Didn't ED go and uh, raid some of them? They should actually give the money back. And even, sorry, uh, you can always say, oh, finance minister is talking like this, irresponsible. Is she a political leader or a finance minister? The money which was taken from the party towards National Herald can be given back to the party, use it. So this is such a frivolous, but for a national party which has governed this country, you want to spend time on this, pay up your due, get going with your work, set an example for the taxpayers of the country. But this is not political vendetta. Absolutely not. From 21 and three, four courts the appeal court, the high court, the IT, AT, everybody. They could have said it, saying there's no case made, made out. The tax authority should step back. None of them have said that. So it's not just me. There is a case made out. They have to pay the tax. So let me ask you, when uh, Heman Soren is targeted, as the opposition says, he steps down. Mr. Arvind K. Jival, uh, tormented by the... Uh, extortion directorate as the enforcement directorate is uh, being called. Uh, isn't this undue pressure on political parties at the time of elections and does this necessarily uh, encourage free and fair polls because uh, you have an unfair advantage of being in the seat of power and putting everybody else uh, on the back foot? Navika, just as you say free and fair, would you please add law abiding Eight summons, eight summons, 
you have one or the other reason and there you didn't tell me that this is political vendetta. You said, no, I have some other work. No, my assembly is on, budget session is on. No, I have a campaign to go somewhere. At that time, political vendetta didn't suit you. Now political vendetta, when even the court has said, go up here. Now because media should be asking meaningful questions rather than asking me a tongue-in-cheek. Media, media is in a position where it gets beaten up regardless. If we ask you questions, you beat us up. If we don't ask you questions, the opposition beats us up. Uh, so we are quite used to being beaten up. Opposition beats you up? Yeah. I don't. <laughs> but you just... None of us do. I mean, do we beat the media? No way. <laughs> We've not touched the media, but the entire universe, all the brotherhood of journalism everywhere, saying freedom of speech in India. I one day sat down and looked at the list of garments harassing journalists. Turns out they are all non-BJP garments. But the impression about India outside is because people now look at India, they look at Prime Minister. And therefore they think he's the one who's harassing. No. In India's federal setup, journalists are getting thrashed in many of the states. And I don't thrash you, but you don't ask them, hey, why are you thrashing me? Modi doesn't thrash me. Say it. I'm boycotted. Who do I say this to? But <laughs> never mind. The question, the question really is, uh, two chief ministers behind bars, uh, uh, every political party is on the back foot uh, facing ED questions. Uh, you say you welcome people. Very soon people are saying at the rate people are joining the BJP, you'll become the reserve political bank of India. You'll have to lend uh, uh, candidates to other uh, political parties to fight elections. Uh, uh, is, that, is that something that we'll see soon? Very interesting proposition. I think you should hold tonight's nine o'clock debate on it. <laughs> but honestly, uh, people who you wouldn't touch with a barge pole, people who you actually called, uh, uh, you know, icons of corruption, are now suddenly all of them in your party. Uh, uh, talk, about, talk about the war widows and their... Uh, Ashok Chavan is in your party. Ajit Pawar, Chakki P. Singh, Chakki P. Singh, irrigation scam, 70,000 crore. Oh, lo and behold, he's joined the BJP. Now he's not Chakki P. Singh. Now he's an uh, icon of development in Maharashtra. I want to ask you, where, where does real politics of development begin and where does hypocrisy end? Real development politics happens and keeps happening. Nothing changes it. People are welcome to come to BJP. But the core work of the BJP, whether it is today, whether it is BJP of pre-14, whether it is BJP of earlier, or even Jansung, has continued. I'm not saying A is an opportunist or B is, or C is not. If people see work happening, and they think as political representatives in the ground, a party is making a difference, they obviously would want to come and join. But the BJP's value systems and the way in which the party runs under certain leadership continue. I don't think there is ever a compromise on that. So tainted leaders joining your party, no bar. Everybody is welcome, even they are welcome, with a red uh, carpet uh, rolled out for them? As I said, party is open. We welcome everybody. Everybody? Yes. Even people who have nine CBI cases against them? Party is welcoming everybody. Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman, let me, let me also ask you, very recently uh, a very well-known film star joined uh, your party. I'm talking about Kangana Ranaut. There were statements made by uh, the social media chairperson of uh, the Congress party, Supriya Srinet, for which even the Election Commission of India has now issued a notice. I want to ask you, statements of this kind, how does that make you as a woman politician feel, uh, is this uh, an easy statement to make about an actor or is this uh, a bit of a mindset issue where women are at the receiving end? It is a mindset issue. It is also readily thrown at people who come from 
the theater or the film industry. And every time I hear it, I really feel awkward. Sometimes I come out openly, sometimes I don't, but I do feel awkward. And it is outrageous uh, when uh, people in similar fields, meaning today in politics, similar in politics, are the ones who come in to comment like this. At least once you are in politics, you know you represent people's aspirations. You serve that cause. You would be reticent much before you come out with such comments. It doesn't come well or it doesn't go well with leaders who are in public life. Certainly. Oh, is it all right if somebody else uh, does it? No, it's not all right. But this has an impact on so many people who watch you, who follow you, who are associated with the party, who think this is my leadership. We just can't afford that kind of a statement. And I'm not reserving this comment only because this person is a Congress person. Any party. I think it's high time in India immediately such a person is made to apologize unconditionally, irrespective of party. I don't reserve it to some party and not to my party, wherever it comes from. It's abhorrent. We should reject it. And what do you think about the explanation that has been given by Ms. Uh, Supriya Srinet, uh, who incidentally, uh, in her previous profession, was our colleague uh, uh, and, and a journalist covering the finance ministry. I don't know if you had uh, yes, opportunity had. of interacting yes. with her. How do you look at the explanation that uh, she has given that uh, there are many people who can access her uh, uh, social media handles and somebody has done that and uh, she herself does not endorse this. It made you the buy problem that? worse. It actually made the problem even worse for her. I don't think it helped the cause at all. The calm thinking head could have done something else differently, straight away apologized would have been a better solution, but I'm no person to advise her. After all, she's been a journalist earlier. <laughs> you're so scared of journalists. Oh, yes. Are you making oh, a point on, on the stage? Yes, because <laughs> you're sitting next to a journalist. It's most unfair, uh, Miss... Uh... Next to a journalist, a senior journalist, Navika Kumar. So, a, a very highly placed uh, woman journalist. Yes, I'm High conscious pitched. of that. High-pitched? No, not high pitch, but I am very <laughs> so, conscious of that. No, but with due respects, I am conscious that particularly women cannot undermine another woman. And I'm not saying men can. No, men cannot. But it's worse when another woman does it. Well said. Let me, let me ask you about uh, uh, this Abki Bar Char Sopar. How realistic uh, is this target? Is it just a slogan to enthuse the cadres? Or, uh, uh, you know, do you really think this is going to happen given the emphasis on the south of India? And why am I asking this question? Because in 2019, uh, you had Karnataka under your belt. You got uh, 25 seats in Karnataka itself and four seats in other south Indian states. That took your total up to 29 out of the 130 seats that, that come from south India to the parliament. This time around, you don't even have Karnataka, a government in Karnataka, uh, but the Prime Minister's blitzkrieg in the south, the way you've been traveling in the south. Do you really have huge expectations from the south, or is this, uh, is this a slogan and uh, uh, you know, plan of action for future elections? Navika, it was the Honorable Prime Minister who put that target before us. When he said 370 for BJP, 400 for NDA, it's the Prime Minister speaking. Do you think it is said in a lighter vein? Not at all. You may take it as a target for us to work. We'll have to strive for it. Stability, no internal major disturbances, no terrorist attack, no corruption. Free food for people who deserve it. The way in which many of the schemes have reached every citizen who deserves to get it. And the way in which investments have been made to create some of the finest 
asset for the country which will last another hundred years. Highways, roadways, airports, seaports being improved, middle class citizen reaching, to, reaching his nearest Udan airport, which is not a big deal, just no frills, just take an aircraft, go and reach the airport you want to go when you want to go see your children abroad. Every section has seen visibly development happening. So, and also the way in which they respond to the Prime Minister. These are not mobilized crowds. And the people who listen to his monkey bath right back to him saying, you spoke, to, spoke about me, who's an unknown figure in my village, but today my village knows about it in spite of me having made the road between my village to the next cemetery because we were carrying our dead through, you know, mud holes and uh, ups and downs of a river and uh, the hillock. So identifying common citizens who deserve to be praised are measures which have reached the PM to the hearts of the citizens. So he's confident, we are confident, all of us are confident that there is a resonance in the ground. And therefore 370 is not just a dream, it's not just an adesh for the BJP Karyakarta, it is a realizable target, we are working for it. And the 10 years performance will speak in the ground. So let me ask you, what are the numbers out of 130 seats in South of India? How many will the BJP get this time? I'm not going to give you any number at the moment. The work is happening. You're the finance minister. Numbers is the game you play all day. Yeah, but that's money. This is constituency. <laughs> <laughs> so seat, seats to Lok Sabha, you're not putting a, a bet on that? It, it, probably a bit too early. I might do it a bit later. Okay, so then we'll have to hold another conclave you and have, have you on again to give us a prediction of the uh, seats. Uh, uh, but let me, let me ask you, hand on your heart, do you think the way the agencies are let on uh, opposition leaders is, is really fair? I, I'm not saying there is no corruption, there is no case, but the timing of it and the fact that it... Uh, somehow or the other tries to put opposition leaders and opposition parties uh, on the back foot. Uh, is, this, is this a strategy for the BJP? Or uh, will you say uh, the very kosher uh, law must take its own course because that is something uh, that most politicians end up saying? No. Law must take its own course didn't happen between 2004 and 14. Every day there was a scandal happening. And there were people from the government then who said caged, parrot, CBI. It did do nothing. None of the enforcement agencies did everything, anything at all on the ground, except, of course, going after Prime Minister Modi, who was the chief minister in Gujarat. Except, of, uh, of course, going after the home minister, now home minister, home minister then of Gujarat. So the caged parrot is now led to do its job. And that is when there is no scandal in the government. So obviously, the cage parish will not come to me. It will go where the scandal is. And the scandal is galore there. Tell me one law enforcement visit which has happened to anybody and where they've come back, Kali Hath. Kejriwal's house. Oh, His no, wife, no, Sunita no. Kejriwal, has done a press conference and said, Ek bhi paisa nahi mila kahi se. It's a foisted case. It's all right. You, what do you expect them to say? Liquor policy has been... You, me, everybody. The Congress party wrote letters after letter saying why is action not being taken on him? Liquor policy is open and shut case. Everybody knew what was happening. They had to change the policy afterwards. By then the damage was done. And it is that which is making all of them go in. So there's nothing. Excuse me. Tell me one voice in this crowd which will tell me that there's nothing about the liquor policy. We are only you know, following uh, and asking the enforcement agencies to go and harass them. The liquor policy was leaking from everywhere. All of us knew about it. And it went so far as to involve even a southern state's political leaders. And people are speaking like parrot, taking the names of people. That's getting reported in the media. So what is not found in my house business? 
But uh, Mr. Kejriwal uh, says he has the right to run the government from the jail. He's not convicted yet. And he's giving orders from the jail. Kahi pani kam hai to pani pohunchado. Kahi dawai kam hai to mohalla clinic mein dawai pohunchado. He's still worried about the common uh, people, the arm army of death. You know, I don't want to take a... If I say something, it'll appear as though I'm taking vicarious pleasure in saying it. But let's be clear. Delhi and governance in Delhi is occurring now, sitting in the jail. Mohalla cleanings were rotten. They're rotting. When the chief minister was out in Delhi, free to do what he wanted to govern, you had no visit to the Mohalla cleaning. You had no special session of the Delhi Assembly taking care of the Mohallas, Mohalla cleanings. Now suddenly, he has all the time to think sitting there. So he's thinking about Mohalla clinics ah. now. What was he thinking so about going before to be that? Better, I leave it to you. You might want to prefer it. Delhi governance went down the drain. The chief minister was everywhere with the help of Chief Minister Punjab, who was actually playing the concierge for the helicopter. Or the aircraft. Punjab government uh, aircraft was being used. And it, since it can't fly without the chief minister, he was accompanying him, forgetting what is happening or what is to be done in Punjab. It led to such blatant misuse. Governance suffered in Punjab and in Delhi. Now if governance is improving, I don't want to say this sentence any further. No. So you're saying that he should be in jail and continue to no, govern well? No, I'm not saying anything. It's for the citizens of Delhi to think about what next. So let me, let me also ask you, the BJP, if it was very confident, and this is a question opposition asks very often, if you were so confident, why are you taking uh, people left, right, and center from other political parties? Why are you breaking governments? Uh, even in Himachal Pradesh, you've imported, I think, uh, nine uh, MLAs, uh, six from Congress, three independents. Uh, uh, you, you are uh, also now suddenly finding alliance partners uh, when for 10 years you didn't have any need for them. Is it uh, nervousness? Kya uh, BJP hai? Opposition asked. When this can't hold good, can it? BJP dar gai hai, magar BJP bej rahi hai ED. Make up your mind, yeah. <laughs> I can't be dara hua and use CBI to go after you. And equally, invite political parties to come have alliance with me. So these convenience arguments which are being cooked up by opposition parties are essentially telling me that we as a party are being efficient enough to keep our agenda moving forward and being alert about developments which are happening around us. Now, if MLAs have left the Himachal Assembly, resigned, they are going to face an election. In the by-election, if the people reject them, they are not going to win at all. So if Congress is so sure that they have won on the Congress symbol and because they believed in the Congress dynastic politics, they should win again. Congress should win again against these people who have left the party and come over to BJP. The proof of the pudding is there. So no point in alleging us saying, oh, independents have also gone to you, so and so. People are choosing to say in Himachal Pradesh, I will not contest the election because it's not favorable. Hasn't the PCC president of Himachal Pradesh said that? She's a very senior hand. I respect her. Not for what she said, but I respect her even otherwise. She's a very senior Congress Party's leader. Today she's the PCC. She has said it, saying, sorry, I can't contest because it's not favorable. In Tamil Nadu, till yesterday, Congress could not find candidates to contest. And in the last minute, they thought of Mahila Congress chief and therefore put her. If your priority was to give a woman leader, you should have put her in the first place, even on the first day. Five lists have come out and you're still thinking of who to place, beg X, beg Y, beg somebody else. And every fellow says, no, leave me. I don't want to come and contest. 
And then you suddenly think of, I can win the game by bringing the woman. Whether she wins or not, if she wins, all right, we'll claim, see, we also support women. And if she loses, we can always say, that is why we never choose women, because winnability is zero. And you make a bakra of a woman leader of your party. You're not getting people to contest. Let's have Congress accept this at least once. In Gujarat, no congressman wants to be in the party. They're all leaving the Congress and going away. So please get your house to order before you day in and day out talk about Nyai, Jodo, you know, Dilwado, Kuch, Kisi Ke Liye, Skills Ke Liye, I'll give you right. Kaham bhai, have some coherence in your narrative. I want to ask you, you said you uh, respect the PCC chief in Himachal. Any other Congress people who you respect? I respect a lot of them. How many? Sonia I Gandhi? I, I do respect her. Why not? Of course, she's been holding the party for some time. She's shown leadership. But of course, today the environment for Congress is very different. People are not able to, you know, uh, accept their uh, leadership because it's all in a disarray. There are quite a lot of Congress people who I respect even today. There are very senior leaders in state level who have also been, you know, uh, for a very long time in Congress party, and they've served the party. But unfortunately, today they are all listless because there's no leadership. Rahul Gandhi, Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra 2.0. What do you think? Uh, Where was it happening? When was it happening? <laughs> it just... Media didn't give it space. Leave me. So, so we gave it enough space. Every no, 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 day, not at all. He to spoke about caste census. He spoke about Jati Janganna. He spoke about uh, so many issues. Uh, it was in the media. You can't blame the media for everything. Not the front page kind, you know, irrespective of whatever they do. Congress party has a reserved front page slot. Yeah. It didn't fill that slot. You kept it alive. Aap you dar kept se, it they space. Will they but said, aapke dar se, media nahi dikha ra No, front page mein nahi dikha ya na, kahi dal diya. But Congress ka kuch aur vishay idhar hai. Jaysay, people have left the party. That is in front page. Not Rahul Gandhi in the front page. So what do you think about Rahul Gandhi's leadership qualities? I, I, I seriously want to ask you, how do you see him as an opponent? And in every, in every election, there is... Uh, an incumbent party which fights against an opponent. There is Rahul Gandhi uh, leading as the national alliance, uh, national uh, political party, leading an uh, alliance uh, of other political parties consisting of Trinamool Congress, Samajwadi Party, all, all of these parties. What do you think about the opposition and each of these leaders? No, they each have their own strengths, no doubt. And you ask me about Rahul Gandhi, I'll also say this. He's got it in a platter. He's inherited the leadership in a platter. I'm sure if he had contemplated on how he wants to take himself forward, I'm not here to advise him. Let me first put that before you. But if he wants to take his leadership along with the rest of them, there's a lot more to introspect. India wants a lot of you know, opposition leaders who can be strong enough to put their voice across. Opposition is required in this country. There's no way anyone says, oh, it's all right. But they have to rise to the occasion. What do you think about Mamta Banerjee? Well, she's been winning in West Bengal. Can it be less of an achievement? She's a fighter, no doubt. And uh, she says that you have given her stepmotherly uh, uh, treatment. You don't give uh, uh, funds to states. And this is something that comes from the DMK government in Tamil Nadu, it comes from Bengal, it comes from uh, all states uh, ruled by opposition parties that the center, the finance ministry is not giving them funds that are due to them. Well, not all states. Urissa doesn't tell you that. Wo to aapke dost Andhra hai, Pradesh na. doesn't Alliance tell you that. Alliance is not happening, it will not happen, it will not happen. But even then, there are also states which are, I mean, they are ruled by... Their party is not by BJP. They are not an open alliance with them. One, by any state, all those you've listed out, saying, I have denied them their due funds without legitimate reasons. You don't give me audited certificates. 
you don't give me utilization certificate. In West Bengal particularly, teams, both of the center and the state, went together to the field to check if there has been any leakage. Together they've come back to say, yes, there has been leakage and this is the number. You would correct it and then come back to me to say, therefore this much has got to be given and not that much which I claimed earlier. It wasn't just a central team. Simultaneously, together, you had the state team going together to village after village and proving they have given it to people who did not exist in the village. Now, because you're asking me so much in detail, let me tell you further. And they didn't find these people, but monies have been paid. So, it was required for them to get those monies back and say, yes, money has been retrieved from non-existing individuals to whom it went. Then send me a utilization certificate, post which I will give them what, what is additionally due thereafter. You know what Bengal did? And I'm sure many of you all will immediately see why that is unacceptable. The monies were not retrieved from the ground. But the government's treasury in West Bengal made up for that money, in other words, a double whammy. It goes to unknown people. You didn't retrieve them in spite of these two, two teams officially going and identifying, saying, no, this much of pilferage has happened. You don't retrieve the money. On the contrary, because you know you can't retrieve it, you're filling it up with additional money, taxpayers' money, and saying, no, all right, you take this as retrieved. Where did it come from? From the treasury again. So, anyai ke upar anyai. And when I say, sorry, how will I give money now? You're doing wrong. You're, you step motherly treatment to West Bengal. Somebody should stand up and ask these questions. And when we ask these questions in the parliament, we are shouted down, they walk out, they refuse, they say, Modi, you're a dictator. Are Baba, you are filling up the coffer with money which was supposed to have been retracted from wrong hands. You didn't. Instead, you're putting the money again from that taxpayer's treasury. How right is that? And when questions are asked on these, oh, stepmotherly treatment. So you're saying there are ghost accounts. What kind of money that we are talking about? Well, last two years, this has been debated in the parliament. Every session I've answered this. Every session the rural development minister has answered this. But no, the TMC will still say the same allegation. Majorly. If this is the way pilferage has happened. And it is on record that this is the way money has been retrieved. Will you accept it? I ask of you all. Will you accept this? You've also targeted their uh, member of parliament, Mohua Moitra, in the past. Once again, ED unleashed on her. And, uh, uh, you know, once again, uh, around election, questions, CBI raids, um, everything happening. Clearly, there is a pattern, people say. The pattern is only attack the opposition, not the ruling party, their MPs, their supporters. Nobody touches them. Look, this balancing act nonsense doesn't work because we have to prove that we are very sincere. Law pursues them who disobey it. If you've disobeyed, you will have enforcement agencies coming to you. And just because you belong to the opposition party, I don't need to. For every two in the opposition, I need two from my party. Law of the land, yeah, please, let's respect it and stop making political arguments over it. If they, are, if they are found fault, meaning if the law enforcement agencies have been found fault with because you pursued them on political interest, courts are going to thrash us down. The credit, credibility of the enforcement agencies will all come down. They'll be severely pulled up. You think agencies are not conscious of these sort of things? 
the courts have thrashed you down on the issue of electoral bonds on the issue of electoral bonds you were seen on the back foot trying to hide information that should have been transparently available to citizens of india not my words words of uh, the apex court the supreme court and now as more and more people are uh, going through the data they are saying that at least 16 such companies who have donated to the bjp and other political parties have donated after they were raided by one enforcement agency or the other two or three things uh, navika the court said thrashed a law which existed it was a law passed by the parliament and based on the law bonds have been bought bonds have been encashed based on that law bonds have been bought bonds have been encashed by all parties maybe just one who didn't want it cpm okay. so now when it has been encashed by all parties based on a law so it was not unlawful during that time when the law was in place today the supreme court has said no that law shall not be and having said that that law is no longer valid they still went ahead to say reveal everything which happened during that phase and it's also equally true i'm not uh, dissecting the court's order but it's equally true that at that time confidentiality of the donor was a uh, given in the law i remember arun jaitley speaking about it in the parliament post which it was passed but never mind the court wanted that to be disclosed it has been disclosed after the disclosure now more than 10 days have passed everybody has done a complete tooth combing of the data everyone has received from everybody every donor has given everybody ed raids have happened even on those who have given the money to bjp you may pick up and say ed raids have happened and therefore some donors picked up bonds and gave but i want to also put it the other way around people had given money through the bonds ed raids still happened it didn't give them the immunity no but they are talking about money coming in right after the raids which i'm is... exactly saying this even after the money has been given we still sent the ed if we are sending ed ed is at all ed is are independent to do what they want so i think it's reached a stage where political parties think it's if you show one finger business you know three are coming back to me so better leave the topic where it is it's reached that stage because all kinds of permutation combination have been used to you know go through the data nobody is wiser now the very party which now says oh this is a scam this is a scandal had also taken money through the bonds tell me what moral authority anyone has to speak because it was the law then it went lawfully it was a, a step better than what prevailed earlier what prevailed earlier was a law where it was free for all you could give in cash you could give in you know boris you could come in suitcases you could do anything whereas what this one did was at least that the donor will put it in his account the recipient party will put it into it its own account so there is a money trail that you can establish is it not one step better than what was before that was a story in the electoral electoral bond business but that's not now the case because the court has struck it down so next term if you were to come back uh, will you look at uh, financing of elections uh, and uh, you know meet the twin ambitions and goals of transparency as well as controlling money power in politics it is important and we need to have a lot more debate about it lot more inputs from stakeholders we need to understand how to better the system which has been rejected now 
which was still better than the earlier prevailing system, which is what we've gone back to now, we need to do something better. But a lot more work is required. Before I let you go, Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman, uh, there is an ongoing uh, Twitter war that's on between you uh, and, and Congress uh, uh, media head uh, Jairam Ramesh on the Atal Pension Scheme. What would, what would you like to say to Jairam Ramesh today? I've said it all on the Twitter. But, but when they say that you're forcing people into insurance schemes, uh, he has a point? Not at all. This coercion business is so much a Congress tactic. I quoted even in my first tweet. And it's worth remembering. The State Bank of India's then chairman, R.K. Talwar, was a legend in banking. He was coerced to quit his job only because he refused to give loan to the dynasty's favorites. He refused. Stubbornly, he said, no, that party I cannot give because it's not right. And they made sure they breathed down his neck. And he stayed put. He said, let me see how you're removing me. Remove me if you want. But I'm not resigning. Coercion to the fullest was used by Congress to make the man leave. A legend in banking history of India. That's coercion, Navika. Nobody else can master it like the way Congress has. Well, uh... Let me, let me do a rapid fire round with you. And on the rapid fire, I want to ask you, who's your uh, favorite current day politician? I won't answer it. Because Why? Current day politician? Not one. There are several, for several reasons. One I like for something, another I like for something else, and so on. So I can't name one in particular. Achha, one opposition leader who you really have respect for current day. Again, I won't be able to answer it. There are few people. There are few people. Oh, come on, this is Are you mischief. spoiled for choice? This, this is, this is, is a country of 140 crore people. You can't choose one. 140 crore, and therefore I can't choose one. <laughs> there are just too many. Okay. Uh, what does Nirmala Sitaraman uh, uh, do in her free time? Listen to a lot of music, cooking, and read. And Twitter wars on the side? Yes. No, that's actually time consuming, but it's worth the fight. And uh, during elections, uh, uh, how, how, how do you want to take the message of your government to the people of India? Well, I'll be campaigning. I'll be going to a lot of Nukat Sabhas. I'll also be attending a lot of media events um, and going with the candidates. Like tomorrow, I'll be going for Rajiv Chandrasekhar's campaign in Tirvanandapuram. So, yes, I'll be on the campaign trail. So, so let, me, let me ask you, uh, as, as a woman finance minister, were you at the receiving end uh, uh, of a little bit of peer pressure, a little bit of competitiveness? Does it happen to uh, women in uh, political parties and women even in the cabinet? Yes, it does. Yes? Yes, it does. It does happen. and uh, Backstabbing also? Uh, well, I don't know about that because I'm still surviving. So, <laughs> no, but yes, there's a lot of... Um, at least the social media has become very powerful, a tool in the hands of everyone. True democracy, I can't complain. But it is so used easily, readily to target women politicians. Women in any field, I would think. But I think we'll have to just survive it. We've just got to ignore it. And if you start responding, there's just no end to it. So let me ask you, most of your colleagues uh, uh, who were from the Rajya Sabha have been uh, uh, now, uh, are now in the fray for contesting Lok Sabha elections. Is Nirmala Sitaraman also going to contest uh, a Lok Sabha seat this no, time? No, no. The party did ask me. But um, after thinking over it for a week or 10 days, I just went back to say, maybe not. Because uh, my party president did ask me, would you want to contest from somewhere in the south? Uh, option is yours, Tamil Nadu or Andhra Pradesh. But uh, I don't have that kind of money to contest. I also have a problem because whether it is Andhra or Tamil Nadu, it's also going to be a question of, you know, various other winnability criteria that they use. Are you from this community? Are you from that religion? Are you from this? 
I said, no, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. To accept my arguments and said, Chalo, you won't. It's all right. So I'm not contesting. Okay, so money power, even the finance minister of India does not have money to contest an election. That is a statement. Yes. I mean, the consolidated how can fund the of India is not mine. <laughs> money power, my budget, my salary, my earning, my saving is mine, not the consolidated fund of India. And so all other. Obviously, I can't. Well said, well said, uh, Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman. Uh, may we have uh, more finance ministers who set an example as you have. And uh, it's a proud moment uh, for India to have had a woman finance minister, the first full-time woman finance minister for uh, the record number of uh, budgets that you have uh, presented and uh, also surviving the full five-year term. Uh, despite, as you say, uh, the daggers that were drawn out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Navika. And thank you, Times. <laughs> Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman.